gross. It's expired. Almond milk doesn't go bad. It's not milk. Sorry, what? Can you do this to almonds? Please stop doing that. No, you can't milk an almond. It's not milk. It absolutely goes bad. No, it's like cheese. It's fine. It's just a myth. How are you alive? Look, I'll prove it. Hand it over. What? No. Seriously, it's fine. No. I'm not afraid. Give it to me. You want to drink? You want to drink it? Do you want to learn something or not? Do you want to continue being an idiot? Fine, be an idiot. Don't learn anything. Seriously, give it to me. Mm -mm. Let me prove my point, Josh. Don't, you shouldn't. Don't tell me what I should and shouldn't do. No. Give me the almond milk. Thank you. Oh, no. No. Oh, 2018 was a uh, while ago. Oh my God. Bubbles, curd, right in the sweet spot. Oh. It, you know what that reminds me of? Like a Burger King gas station. When you're driving on the interstate and you see it, you gotta stop, you gotta try it. What does that even mean? Watch, ready? He shouldn't, oh, he's doing it. I mean, oh, dude. Man, there's some curds. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, it's kind of like tofu. It's like, what? Oh, oh. Justin? It's just a little burp. It's going to be harmless. Oh, sorry. It's coming up. I got to wash it down. Justin, no. Oh. Don't you puke. No. <coughs> Stop. 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 Oh, that's really gross. You've seen the frozen in time effect in plenty of films like Quicksilver from the X-Men films or that famous one from the other guys where they move through the scene with the leads in different spots playing out the night. Of course, we ripped this exact idea off to give it a shot years ago when we did this episode with our friend Eric Kessler and we did it the same way they did in the other guys. We shot the scene with a motion controlled camera and while we roll, the talent in front of the camera just stays as still as possible. After that, you go through and you add frozen 3D elements that couldn't possibly be frozen in real life, which does a lot to sell that frozen effect. It also has been handled practically to some extent using props and rigging, so there's plenty of ways to toy around with this idea. But whatever way you go about it, it's just a fun effect to mess around with, especially when it comes to liquids. And it really is amazing how much that impossible frozen element within the shot sells the whole thing. For instance, here's the shot again. It totally works, but if we were remove the frozen liquid and play the same shot, it doesn't really feel frozen anymore. And you can see very small movements from Justin even. But first things first, we have to shoot the shot for this. We again just had Justin stay as still as possible while I moved the camera around, keeping a roundabout idea of where the milk would be in my mind. Then at the end of the shot, I rack focus so that we could shift it to the milk in post. And I think it's worth pausing and pointing out that Justin was actually chugging the milk, which isn't that big of a deal, but after several takes and Justin acting that throwing up, the acting turned into something a little more real. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All the, do one where it's like, like you try to stop it, but then it's real. <laughs> no, it's real. No, don't throw up. Don't throw up. Justin, don't do it. <laughs> It may have been the hardest I've laughed while shooting any episode of Film Riot after Justin actually threw up. Both me and Josh's gag reflexes were triggered and all three of us ended up throwing up while laughing hysterically. It was one of the funniest and most disgusting moments of my life and I wish we had footage for it. <laughs> okay. Oh. But back to why we're here. So we have our shot and now we're gonna jump into After Effects and create a new comp. Then we're gonna right click, track and stabilize, track camera. And once that's done, find a point near to the origin of where you want the effect to be and right click, create a null and camera. And for the milk, we're going to be using Element 3D. So create a new solid layer and apply the Element 3D effect. We're gonna be using a couple of assets from Motion Design 2 packs. But if you don't own these, you can find 3D liquid models at places such as CG Trader and Turbo Squid. There's a lot of different options here, but we chose Splash 7, rotating 
moving it to face forward, then also used a copy of Abstract Liquid 1 scaled down and placed them around the main model to add extra detail of little liquid particles in the air. In the Pro Shaders Translucent category, there's already a milk preset available, but you could make something similar playing around with gloss, reflections, and refractions on a white base material if needed. Back in After Effects, we need to place our model in the correct location. Each camera track is different, so sometimes it's placed pretty well already, other times it might not be in frame. We can use the Z position from the 3D null and pass it into the Element World Z position and use the world scale or group particles scale to increase the size. Because we want the stream of milk to be close to the camera as we move around, we're going to increase the scale quite high. You can also alter the group X, Y, and Z position to align it as well as the group rotation, scrubbing through the timeline to adjust the framing. In the particle size drop down, you have further control over the scale in the different axis. Controlling the Z scale will alter how far we want the model to the camera. To match better with our scene in the render settings, we changed environment and light rotations and strength just going by eye, then enabled ambient occlusion with a boosted radius. To match the color, we used the curves effect to lower the brighter areas, raised the red channel, and lowered the blue, giving us a warmer tone, basically going for a slightly brighter version of the milk carton color. Why is it so yellow? <laughs> We have more to do here, but before we get to that, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Envato. So whether you are doing a YouTube show or just random videos, weddings, or other event work, commercials, even short films, at our level, you're always finding yourself needing assets fast, and you usually don't have time or money or the know-how to get them, which is why we have been using Envato for over five years. With one subscription, you get access to tons of music, sound effects, VFX assets, graphics, assets, fonts, and so on. They even have templates for social media images, resumes, and websites. It really is a little bit of everything. The thing that we use the most are graphics and overlays. Those are the things that we need most often and quickly. Some of the promos that we did for our new products that we just released on Black Friday are great examples of that. Or different overlays that we've used on the show, like the chalk assets, or different graphics for special segments like we used for the Black Friday episode. And it's unlimited downloads from 53 million plus assets, and this is true unlimited downloads with a very simple licensing with their lifetime commercial license, so you can use it knowing that it's good for either personal or commercial work. So if you're like us and constantly needing solid assets, jump into the notes and follow the link to get 70% off your first month. Logo. But now let's jump back into Frozen Vomit, because this is a classy show made by classy people. <laughs> okay. Oh. Next, we thought it would be cool to add some shallow depth of field, which is really easy just by pressing the A key twice with your camera selected and enabling depth of field. Increase the aperture amount pretty high so we can see the effect it's having, then slide the focus distance. We wanted our focus to be around Justin, and if you wanted to add a focus pool, keyframe the distance, then later in the timeline, move it nearer or further away. Press F9 to easy ease the keys, then create a new adjustment layer above the footage to use for a background blur. Add a fast blur effect and check repeat edge pixels, then at the points that we keyframe the focus pool, keyframe the blur effect to increase respectively to push that focus pool effect on the footage plate as well. To finish, we just added a subtle blur vignette giving us this, and remember, you can create different shapes and patterns by altering positions, rotation, and scale, or using different models. You can also try different shaders. We tried this clear shader to give us a water look and had a displacement layer affecting the footage, but it felt a bit more like ice or glass. It's something that you should try out though and see what looks you can get with different effects. Oh, that's not good. That's not good, I don't know why I'm doing it more. But that's it, and what I love about something like this is how simple it really is, and it's not locked to this one idea. Just like the majority of the effects that we try and show here, you can take this one idea and technique and get creative. Use it for other liquids like blood, or not a liquid at all. Do it with objects or something I'm not even thinking of. With everything that we show here, the main thing should always be thinking about the concepts. Take the core idea and think about how you could make something completely unique with that. But as always, if you aren't subscribed, consider doing that. Hit the bell so you're notified when we put up new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.